Hello, my name is Pastor Greg Cheslick from 4th Avenue United Methodist Church in Faribault, Minnesota. With the pandemic going on, we're all kind of in our homes, isolated from one another. Today I'd like to invite you into my home as we enter into this season of Lent more deeply. Over the last several years, I've developed a, a great affection for a Lenten devotional practice that has been particularly meaningful to me. Particularly, we offer it during the Fridays of Lent to remember the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's an adaptation from the ancient Catholic a devotional practice called the Stations of the Cross. I call it the Meditations on the Passion. I want to invite you to join me in praying these Meditations on the Passion as we enter into the biblical narrative, as we focus on particular scenes in the story of Jesus' passion and death, We'll pause after a time of meditation to offer a prayer to enter more deeply into the saving work of Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. The first meditation. Jesus celebrates the Last Supper with his disciples. This night is like no other night. It is the Passover, the annual festival commemorating God's miraculous intervention in the days of Moses to deliver his people from Egyptian bondage. Through many signs and wonders, God displayed his love and power for the people of the covenant. As darkness falls upon this night, Jesus gathers his disciples around him for a last supper. As the powers of darkness descend upon him, he takes a loaf of bread, blesses it, breaks it, saying, This is my body given for you. After supper, he takes a cup, blesses it, and passes it around the circle, saying, This is my blood given for you. In this last meal he will share with his disciples, Jesus reveals that he is the new Passover lamb that will seal the new covenant through his sacrificial death. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Surrounded by one who would betray you, one who would deny you, and the rest who would desert you in your time of trial, you shared the holy meal of deliverance that would take on its fullest significance in your suffering death and resurrection. Fill me with holy wonder that though I am a sinner, you count me worthy to have a place at your table of forgiveness and mercy. May my living reflect my deepest gratitude. Amen. The second meditation, Jesus prays in the garden. After the holy meal was over, Jesus made his way to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. As he faced his darkest hour, the hour of decision, he was looking to his disciples for support. But those into whom Jesus had poured his life could not remain awake. Lonely and fearful, Jesus cried out to God, Is this the only way? Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet if this is your way, your will, not mine, be done. Struggling and in agony, Jesus surrenders to the Father's plan. He finds strength from God's angels, which allow him to continue along this lonesome journey. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as I reflect upon your experience in the garden, I am once again astounded by your humanness. You are not God in flesh, well, sort of, but truly God, 
in human flesh. You are Emmanuel, God with us, God with me. You understand me. You stand with me in hard times. You encourage me as I wrestle with God's will, and you pray continuously for me. How I thank you, dear Lord, for who you are, for what you have done, and for what you are doing in my life today. Amen. The third meditation. Jesus is betrayed by Judas. Jesus had handpicked his disciples. He had seen so much potential within each one of them. But as time went on and Jesus resisted bringing God's kingdom by force, Judas became disillusioned. His expectations of Messiah simply did not square with Jesus' vision for his life. So after three years in the circle of the disciples, Judas decided to cut his losses with a kiss, a sign of affection and loyalty no less. Judas betrayed Jesus into the hands of the Roman authorities. Let us pray. O Lord, as much as I hate to admit it, there is a bit of Judas in me. Forgive me for the times I've pledged my love for you only to reject you in the way I live. Forgive me for the ways that I turn on those I love because they do not share my preferences or measure up to my expectations. Help me to see where my motives are mixed. Set me free to be wholly devoted to you, even when I don't understand you, even when I suffer disappointment, even when I'm afraid that following you is too risky. Amen. The fourth meditation, Jesus is condemned by the Sanhedrin. God's Messiah is brought before the Sanhedrin. False accusations are leveled against him. Inconsistent testimony is spoken against this innocent man. When asked if he were the Messiah, Jesus reluctantly admits that he is, knowing that his accusers and those who had earthly authority over him could not possibly understand God's ways. The religious leaders reject him as a blasphemer. With barely a word from Jesus defending himself, Jesus is condemned as one deserving death. Let us pray. O oh Lord, the Jewish officials didn't understand what it meant for you to be Messiah, and they condemned you as a criminal worthy of death. Your own followers didn't understand the nature of your mission, so they scattered and hid in your hour of crisis. Help me not to be like these. Help me to understand what it means to confess you as Christ. May my confession lead me to a life of true discipleship. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done in my life, even this very day. Amen. The fifth meditation, Jesus is denied by Peter. Peter was one of Jesus' rising stars. He showed so much promise for leadership in God's kingdom movement. Peter had been the first to have his eyes open to Jesus as Messiah, though it was clear that he did not completely understand Jesus' mission. He had gotten out of the safety and security of the boat to walk on the water before his faith faltered. Peter had pledged loyalty to Jesus, confessing even a willingness to die with him. But now, at a decisive moment of truth, Peter was clearly not ready to go the distance. The thought of testifying on Jesus' behalf or being associated with a condemned man simply overwhelmed him. As Jesus had predicted on three separate occasions, Peter denied even knowing Jesus. 
as the cock crowed, Peter wept bitterly, confronted by his own failure. How disappointing for Jesus this must have been. Let us pray. Sometimes, Lord, I fail the test you send my way. Forgive me when I let fear grip my heart and paralyze me. Forgive me for all the times I've fallen short in my discipleship. Forgive me for failing to trust you when you've proven yourself trustworthy over and over again. Help me, Lord, not to falter like Peter. When hard times come, help me to trust you more. When my adrenaline starts to pound, clouding my mind and suffocating my heart, flood my heart with your peace. When I'm tempted to shrink from acting or speaking at a decisive moment, help me to trust and obey. I know that you love me unconditionally and work with me even when I falter and fail. May I live my whole life to honor and serve you. Amen. Jesus is judged by Pilate. Jesus now stood before Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate believes that Jesus is innocent, but the stir that surrounds him is an unsettling threat to the peace for which Pilate is responsible. The crowd demands that Jesus be crucified. Three times Pilate questions their judgment, yet each time they respond with greater intensity. Finally, Pilate gives in to this crowd's insane demands, washing his hands of his responsibility and turning over the innocent Jesus to be crucified. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you know how easy it is for me to be like Pilate. I don't like to go against the crowd. It's easier to rationalize and make excuses. I find that I can even fool myself into thinking I am without any other choices. Forgive me, Lord, when I follow the way of Pilate. Help me to acknowledge my sins, both to myself and to you, rather than becoming defensive and wallowing in my pointless excuses. By your Spirit, guide me to see clearly where I am falling short, so that I might confess my sins truly and fully. Help me to experience the forgiveness you offer in Christ, and to live in the freedom of your cleansing power. Amen. The seventh meditation, Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns. What cruel irony. Dressed in royal purple, Jesus finally received the words he deserved, Hail, King of the Jews. But these words were spoken in jest. For once he wore a crown upon his head, but not the golden crown of sovereignty nor the olive crown of victory, but the thorny crown of suffering. Thorns, long and terribly sharp, dug deep into the head of a suffering king, his blood surely flowing freely down his face, blurring his eyes, blurring his vision. Here was heaven's king, mocked, tortured, spat upon, struck in the face, scourged, humiliated. Let us pray. Gracious, merciful Lord, how hard it is to reflect on the abuse you suffered even prior to your crucifixion. I can't even begin to imagine what you felt, not only physically, but especially in your soul. What can I say but thank you for walking the path of suffering and shame for me? You took the abuse that I deserved and gave me your glory in return. Help me, dear Lord, to honor you as my King in all that I do. 
May my words and deeds reflect your goodness and celebrate your glory. Amen. The Eighth Meditation Jesus Carries His Cross Having already suffered physical and emotional torture, Jesus' journey was far from over. Now he would have to carry his own cross, the very instrument by which he would be executed. The cross was heavy, and Jesus was now weak. With each step he took, he sought help from his Father. He knew where this all would lead, yet he continued to walk courageously and purposefully, having embraced the Father's plan. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you chose the cross. Yes, the Jewish leaders accused you. The maddening crowd condemned you. And yes, Pilate sentenced you. And indeed, Roman soldiers led you to Golgotha. But in a very real sense, they were simply working out what God had willed and you had cho freely chosen. How I thank you for this costly choice. Because you took up the cross, I can take up life in all of its fullness. Because you were led to die, I can be led into eternal life. Before, because you bore my sin, I can enjoy your forgiveness. How good you are to me, dear Lord, my Savior. Amen. The Ninth Meditation Simon Carries the Cross His torturers noticed that Jesus was having great difficulty carrying the cross. Afraid that he would die en route to Golgotha, they seized a man named Simon of Cyrene and laid the beam of the cross on his shoulder. Simon had traveled a long way for the Passover. It is doubtful that he'd ever heard of Jesus. But as he made his way into the city, he came face to face with a bloodied, brutalized man for whom he would shoulder the cross. In doing so, Simon was demonstrating vividly a response to Jesus' call take up your cross and follow me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Simon's life was suddenly interrupted to carry the cross of a stranger. Let me be like Simon, willing for my plans to be interrupted, to accept the crosses you intend for me to bear. Help me to see interruptions in my schedule and in my life as opportunities to serve you. When a child, an elderly person, or a family member needs my assistance. When a pandemic occurs and I have to isolate. When traffic is heavy or a fellow shopper looks harried in the checkout line. When a friend is carrying a heavy burden or a stranger looks lost. Give me eyes to see that when I respond to the needs of others, I am helping you carry the cross and healing this broken world. Amen. The Tenth Meditation Jesus Speaks to the Women of Jerusalem As Jesus journeyed to the cross, a great number of people followed him. Among them were some women who were weeping and wailing for him. Jesus found strength to stop and speak to them. While he certainly appreciated their expression of empathy toward him, he urged them to focus on the sufferings and injustices endured by others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, on your painful journey to the cross, you stop to speak to the women who empathized with your suffering. Help me, Lord, to really stop and see the sufferings of people around me. Give me grace to reach out to them 
with words of encouragement, a listening ear, an affirming smile, a loving gesture, a healing touch, or even a silent prayer. As you have healed me through your suffering, so may I be willing to stand with those who suffer. Amen. The Eleventh Meditation Jesus is Crucified After all he had already endured, Jesus was crucified, a torturous method of execution reserved for the vilest of criminals. The soldiers threw him to the ground and began to nail him to the cross. They fixed him to the wood of the cross, one nail for each of his hands and one for both of his feet. Jesus felt horrible pain as they drove the nails into his flesh. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you created the universe and everything in it, but now you are nailed to a tree. With your hands you healed the sick. With your feet you brought good news everywhere. With your heart you loved the world. But now your hands and feet were cruelly fixed to the wood, and your heart was broken. Help me to remember when I suffer unfairly, you suffered too. When I am lonely and my heart breaks, remind me that you are always there for me. When I feel that no one loves me, remind me that you went to the cross to show me how much I matter to you. Amen. The Twelfth Meditation Jesus Speaks from the Cross The innocent Jesus now hung from the cross. On his right and on his left were vile men whose crimes truly warranted the sentence of death. One of the men heaped insults upon Jesus. The other man was humbled by his fate, acknowledging that while he was suffering for his crimes justly, he was attended by one who was also suffering, but had done nothing wrong. And he reached out to Jesus for a glimmer of hope. Jesus prayed for his executioners, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and looked with compassion upon the remorseful criminal, saying, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. Dear Lord, how I thank and praise you for your mercy. You give me not what I deserve, but infinitely better. Thank you for hearing my cries to you and for responding to me as you did to the thief who sought your help. Thank you for listening to me, even when I am suffering the consequences for my own mistakes. Thank you for the hope that I have beyond this life. There's so much about the afterlife I don't understand, but what I know is that I will be with you and, you will, and I will see you face to face. And in your presence, there will be fullness of joy. That's more than enough for me. Amen. The Thirteenth Meditation Jesus Speaks to Mary and John Jesus was nearing the end of his cruel journey. His body racked with pain and totally exhausted from this ordeal. Jesus found comfort from the presence of those who faithfully stood by him to the very end. At the foot of his cross among the faithful stood his mother Mary and John, the beloved disciple. Surely Mary must have remembered Simeon's chilling prophecy to her in the temple. This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. Even in the grip of his personal suffering, Jesus was aware of the grief of those around him. 
mothers aren't supposed to face the ch death of their children and friends aren't supposed to die before they grow old. Good people are not supposed to suffer at all. Aware of how his death would impact his mother and his friend, Jesus found the strength to meet their needs. He asked his beloved disciple to care for his mother as if he were his own mother. He asked his beloved mother to care for John as if he were her very own son. Even as Mary and John were in the throes of grief, God was providing for them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when I think of Mary and John, I remember that you weren't just the Son of God bearing the sins of the world. You were also Mary's son, the boy to whom she gave birth the boy she raised and loved. You were also a dear friend to John, with whom she, you had shared the deep bonds of friendship. Comfort all who are grieving and give light to those who walk in darkness. Still my heart when life doesn't make sense or seems upside down. Tend to the hidden and silent wounds I carry within me. Reveal yourself to me, so that in the midst of my sorrow and pain, I may truly know that you hold me secure in the palm of your hands. Amen. The 14th Meditation, Jesus Dies on the Cross. From noon on, darkness came upon the land. Around three in the afternoon, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Just before Jesus was to take his last breath, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And with these words, Jesus took his last breath. Let us pray. My dying Lord Jesus, as I look upon the cross on which you died, I embrace you as my Savior. You showed me how to live, and you showed me how to die. When I think about my own death, I am afraid. Yet because I know that you died in my place, I have hope. So when the hour of my death draws near, give me the courage to rest my soul as you did in God's safekeeping. Amen. The 15th Meditation Jesus is laid in the tomb. It was almost sunset. The Sabbath was quickly approaching. Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the council and a secret disciple of Jesus, asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Aided by Nicodemus, another Jewish leader and a secret disciple, Joseph took Jesus' body from the cross and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He placed the lifeless body in a new tomb, covered by a heavy rock. Now, in this risky act of devotion and love, Joseph's and Nicodemus's secret was known. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in caring for your lifeless body, Joseph and Nicodemus risked losing everything. They found that they could not show their love for you without showing their faith to the world. As I continue along this Lenten journey, give me the courage not to hide my faith. Help me to risk my good name my influence, and perhaps even my friends, to remain faithful and to live my faith openly without shame. Jesus, you gave your life for me. Let me live my life for you. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this time of prayer and devotion with me. 
I sincerely hope that it's been a meaningful experience for you. As we close this time of meditation, let us bow our heads before the throne of grace. Lord Jesus, we are humbled and awed at the immensity of your love and all that you endured for our salvation. May we who have contemplated your passion be drawn more deeply into your saving work. May we see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly this day, this week, the remainder of this Lenten season, and for all the days of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining me for this time of prayer. I sincerely pray that the remainder of the Lenten season would be full of meaning, deepening of your faith, and wonderful preparation for the joyful and powerful celebration of the Lord's resurrection. May God richly bless you.